everyone, this is Jessica here, and I'm going to be showing you very quickly how to use your Silhouette Studio software to do a trace, print, and cut. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at some printable planner stickers, but you could use this method to do any kind of trace and cut. Um, so hopefully you'll stay tuned even if you're not into planning. Um, for me, I am into planning. I've gotten into using a happy planner from me and my big ideas. And at first I was like, this is kind of silly, you know, it's just a planner. And then I started putting all the stickers in and then I got really into it. So um, I started making some for myself. So that's why I thought I would make this little tutorial because I'm getting some printables ready to go. So I'm going to show you an example of some stickers. So here we go. I'm going to open and I'm going to come over here. These are my stickers. Now I've saved them in both PDF and in PNG files. Um, or ping files as someone says. Um, the studio software, if it's the basic edition, it might not open one of those. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe both versions at least will open the PNG files. So that's what I'm going to use. And it really doesn't matter. Okay, and that looks nice. So I'm going to take a look first, just to show you. It's really not as important on this as it might be on other kinds. I'm going to look at the scale very quickly. Um, and I say it might not be important on this, but somewhere else, because these stickers aren't meant to be like whole boxes. They're, you know, half an inch um, to three quarters of an inch wide. They're, they're meant to be small stickers that kind of go into your planner, as opposed to making a full box, like for a weekly layout. But if you were printing out, let's say you found a template for a weekly layout that you were going to make, you'd want to make sure you printed it correctly, and you'd want to make sure that your scale was correct once you imported it here, because if your boxes are, are the wrong size, they might be hanging over into the other side or not filling up the whole box and giving you a bunch of white space that you don't want. So um, that's just giving me a little check on my scale. It's real close to one inch, and that's good enough for me. Now, before we do anything else, make sure that you are not printing anything before you do your trace. And you'll see why in a minute. But don't print anything. If you did, chalk it up to one piece of waste of paper um, and make sure you do all of this stuff before you print. Okay? Um, so here's what we're going to do is we're going to open up the trace feature. If you've never used it, it's right here, um, sort of towards that right side. And it looks like a butterfly with a yellow outline. So I'm going to select a trace area. So right now, if I was to send this to the silhouette, it wouldn't have anything to do. If I printed it out, put it on a mat, threw it in the machine, it's going to go whoop, whoop, right back out. Done because it has nothing to cut. So we have to tell it where we want it to cut. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty powerful machine, but it's not, it's not a mind reader. So we gotta tell it what we want. So I'm gonna select this upper area. The reason I only selected that part is there, there seems to be like a built-in limit. If I was to select all of this, there seems to be like an invisible barrier right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that area smaller and eliminate that problem. So, if you notice, all this yellow just showed up. And the yellow is basically giving you an outline of where the silhouette is going to cut. So if I was to trace this right now, it's not going to look good at all. Okay, notice how I've got all this kind of grungy looking stuff and it's not very clean. Because right now, the silhouette's kind of trace. It's tracing the individual colors. It's even tracing those little dots I've got in my background. But that's not what we actually want. Now, in some applications, let's say you want to make a Superman logo t-shirt. So you go download a Superman logo and you trace it. Well, you're probably going to want the internal details of it. Okay, but in our case for this, we want the outside edge of the stickers because if you think about a sticker, I mean, all the, the details are going to be taken care of by the ink. So all we want is the outer edge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here in my settings. I'm going to turn off the high pass filter. It's going to look totally different now. And I'm going to turn the threshold up. And that's going to give me a pretty darn clean cut for what I want. And you can zoom in. You want to see, it's always good to check out your edges, make sure you don't have any weird graininess. These are a little bit not perfect, but that's okay. I can live with it. All right. So looks looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. What happened there? There we go. So looking pretty good there. Now, I don't want to trace. If I trace, I'm going to get every detail. So I'm going to get the, the word count, the checkbox. I'm going to get that inside. I don't want that for stickers. I just want the outer edge. So I'm going to hit tra trace outer edge. And it doesn't look all that different until you move that, and you see you've got those edges. It's exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to leave that alone for just a minute, and I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to do the same process down below. I'm going to do this in a little faster. So I'm going to select my trace area, high pass filter off, threshold up. Got me a nice little outline there. And I'm going to trace the outer edge, and it looks good to go. So if you wanted to, 
you could go forward, go ahead and get ready to print your files and get them cut. Okay, I'm gonna show you something else that you can do um, to make these even better. So right now, these stickers are gonna be right up to the edge of the paper, um, or right up to the edge of the cut line. Um, the silhouette should, if it works completely correctly, it should cut exactly around the black on these stickers, okay? It should cut exactly around the flags on these stickers. But that's not what we really necessarily want. So when I design my stickers, I actually put in an offset. And what the offset does, um, and I'll actually I'll open the original file so you can see what it looks like. So move. Oh, word count achieve. That's the one. It might take a minute to open. Oh, I spoke too soon. If we look up close on these files, I'm going to turn on the cut setting so you can see what I'm talking about. Notice how the cut line is it's this bold red line. It goes around the little flag, so I get like a darker yellow border and I've got the bright inside. But notice how there's still color outside the line. So when this gets printed, this line is not being cut. Okay? Um, and it's not being printed on there either. There's no hard line there. Um, it's just being shown um, as, as a border for the software. Sorry, I just got tongue-tied there for a second. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to get a print of all of this, okay? But when the silhouette goes back into cut, it's only going to cut here, which is basically going to leave this little border outside. Now that might seem kind of weird, but here's the issue is you're going to get, um, every once in a while, your silhouette when it goes to cut is going to be just the tiniest bit off because uh, it, who knows? Um, if it catches on something or it just doesn't get aligned perfectly at the very beginning, then you're going to be a tiny bit off. So this is not a huge border. It looks big because I'm zoomed in. It's really only about five, um, four or five one hundredths of an inch. So put together, it's still less than tenth of an inch on either side. It's not going to make a huge size difference, um, and it's not going to use up a ton more ink. Um, but what it is going to do is it's going to allow your silhouette a very tiny margin of error. Um, and I like that because then I don't get any unsightly white edges when I don't want them. If it doesn't bother you, then by all means, you can ignore this whole step. Um, but this is why I'm about to do this next piece is for the offset. Um, I will tell you, though, on if you're using my stickers specifically, um, that, it, that all of them do have an offset built in. So you, you'd probably want to do that or just accept that they're going to be a tiny bit bigger than than you would think. Um, so, you know, the boxes will be a tenth of an inch larger. So, not a, like I said, not a huge deal. Um, but... Just wanted to let you know. All right. So um, I'm going to show you how to do the offset. And I said all that and probably made it sound like a big deal. It's actually really, really easy. Um, so I'm going to just move my image out of the way. Nice thing is with it being the, the, the silhouette treats this as one gigantic image. So you don't have to like select all the boxes. The other nice thing, and I didn't, I don't know why it does this, but I will gladly take it because I was thinking I was going to have to do these individually. The silhouette treats this all like one big set of boxes instead of... Well, how, however many it is, the 42 individual boxes. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to leave that back where it was. Now, I need all of these. So I'm going to select all. My other tool I'm going to use up here is the offset. So I'm going to open the offset. And offset is going to give me that little interior line like I was just showing you on the other file. So I'm going to select internal offset. And it's already set right around where, I, where I've been setting it, 0 0.04 inches. Um, you can do round, you can do corner if you want to. Um, it's up to you. It, it, I would use maybe corner because of those bottom ones so it doesn't soften out those little flag edges too much. Um, but that is up to you. So I'll show you what it looks like with the round, and you can decide. So internal offset again, round. And you can do these separately if you'd like. So if you wanted to do the top with the nice round one and the bottom with the uh, corners, it's up to you. So there we go. And so now I notice I've got two lines. Now, again, I don't want to leave it like this because now I've got two cut lines. Now, it wouldn't be a huge deal, but now the silhouette's basically going to cut around the very outside, and then it's going to do that nice little offset cut. So you're going to get like a frame around every sticker that comes off the page. So like I said, not a big deal, but I... 
I it just takes one step to get rid of it so if you want to get rid of it you can so I'm just gonna grab the outside now make sure this is where it gets finicky when they're so tiny um see I just grabbed the wrong box I need to grab the outside lines and I'm just gonna delete them I'm gonna do the same thing down here again with it grouping them all together like that it's super easy grabbed all those outside lines and deleting and now all I have to do is move my image back into the correct place wherever it went there it is get it lined up I'll probably zoom in nice and tight so I can see it and I just want to make sure that that offset is pretty well centered and that looks pretty darn good here we go now if that's not quite sharp enough you can always mess with the trace settings a little bit more um, if you're really feeling ambitious you could go in um, you could you know go into one of these rectangles here you could trace it by me or excuse me you could create your own box and tweak it and then just copy paste that a bunch of times um, but this is a quick way to do it and these things when they're zoomed in super tight that look like oh that's a jagged edge they smooth they tend to smooth out when you're actually at the, the actual resolution so from here we just have a little bit left to do um, again don't print yet <laughs> What you're going to want to do, if you're going to print and cut, you also need to use the registration marks. So registration marks are up here. It's this little thing that looks like a piece of paper with L shapes. And we're going to turn those on. And type 1 is what you should need. I'll give you a warning ahead of time. Don't change any of these defaults. I thought I was being real clever the first time I did this, and I changed all my defaults to make them as small as possible. Because basically all that gray, those gray crosshatch areas, that's a no print, no cut zone. So you don't put anything in that area um, if you want it to actually print correctly and print and cut. Um, so I thought I was being real clever by getting it out of the way, but the machine didn't like that very much and all, excuse me, all of my attempts to do that failed. So um, I had to redo a whole sheet, actually like redesigning it with um, the bigger registration marks. So just leave those at their default. If you have messed with them in the past, just do the restore. Um, and when I just, on my sheets, I've actually designed them around the registration marks. So you shouldn't have any issues if you're using those. Um, so now we'll just double check. Those registration marks are super important because that's how the silhouette knows where the stickers are. It knows where the cuts are on the paper. Um, that's not a step you want to skip because if you just throw the paper in there thinking, oh, well, it's going to figure it out or I got it aligned correctly. If you're even a tenth of an inch off, literally the whole page will be wrong. So um, it's it's not a hard step. And if you have any issues with the registering, um, I would suggest just Google troubleshooting um, registration marks. But the biggest issues um, that seem to come up are if you've changed the defaults, um, if you've got anything in that gray area that's throwing the machine off or, um, and I found that this has been an issue with mine, um, the lighting. And so I have found having the machine under direct light, um, like under the, the ceiling fixture, um, has fixed that issue. Um, so anyway, just a little aside for you. Um, so if you know what to do from here, you can go ahead. Um, hopefully you enjoy your stickers. I am going to take a second and talk about settings if you're interested. Um, but otherwise, thanks for tuning in. And I hope this was super helpful for you. All right. Um, so if you're still interested, I'm going to talk very quickly about the settings that I use. Um, I would go into my cut settings. And I use white sticker paper. I do not use Silhouette brands, so if you're new to doing stickers, um, just like with any other materials that you run in your Silhouette, um, it's super smart to do a test cut. Um, and I do this little this little test cut here, um, but you know, once you've done that once, if it didn't work, you have to do something else. So one thing that I do is I often will just make a new file, make sure I select white sticker paper, um, and then I'll just do like a circle, you know, something really small, and then you know. If that one doesn't work out, I'll tweak something and I'll make another shape and delete that one. And I'll just go through that process if I need to as I'm learning a new material. Um, now, if you are if you found sticker paper or whatever that you like, you don't have to do all that. But um, just so you know, that's a way that you can um, that you can test that out if you're having trouble. Um, but I use, let's see if it's set to the correct settings. It is. Um, I use my blade at one. 
my speed between eight and ten um sometimes i turn it down if i'm doing real little detail stickers and i set the thickness around 18. it could probably go up to 19. um the difficulty with doing stickers you're trying to get that kiss cut so you don't want it to cut through the backing um but these settings have worked for me for the staples sticker paper um if you're doing other brands you'll want to just test it out so um hopefully this was informative and helpful to you thanks for tuning in if you have questions drop them in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them thanks and i'll see you next time